Welcome to Health, Wellbeing and Lifestyle Show, where we love to inspire and educate the community to live more healthily, more balanced and feeling more fulfilled in life. And today for our first guest, we have Michael Clark, who's a medical intuitive. And today he's talking to us about naturally healing medical conditions. So Michael, can you tell us a bit more about that? Before I go into about naturally healing medical conditions, I feel it's very important to understand the five critical energies and the six stages of disease. So when I talk about the five critical energies, these energies are within the body and they're outside the body as well. And these critical energies are nuclear energy, electrical energy, radiant energy, chemical energy, and mechanical energy. Now, we have different diseases and disorders based on where the imbalance is in the energies in our system and around us in our environment as well. And what happens is if we get too much of an energy, it starts to accumulate in what I call its home within the body. And then it can move. This is the first stage of disease, right? And then the second stage is where that energy starts to put pressure on that organ or that part of the body. And then it moves into a spread. This is where it starts to spread through the body. And then it starts to isolate into weak areas of the body, within the body. And that's what I call the isolation stage. That's stage four in the disease process. Stage five is the manifestation stage. And this is where most people start to feel and see symptoms. Yeah, And this is when it's really isolated into a tissue within the body and really starting to take over that tissue. And that's why we start to see the symptoms. And then the sixth stage, which is the destruction stage and the disease stage, is when the energy starts to really take over the whole body and starts to you know, really um, take control of the whole body. So the reason I want to share those energies and those processes and stages of disease is because it's very important to understand how you can heal medical conditions naturally. Because when you understand the stage of disease that you're at, you are then able to meet the energy where it is at in the stage of disease and move it back through the layers and through the stages of disease to bring the body and the being of the person back into balance and back into alignment. Okay, could you, uh, well for our viewers, could you give us some examples of what you, how you've seen changes in people with medical diseases? Definitely, so I know of a lady who had breast cancer, right? so that would be the sixth stage of disease. Now breast cancer is related to excess nuclear energy in the body, yeah? And what this lady did, she went out and did simple natural process to, su to support bringing that nuclear energy and the whole energies in the body back into balance and then also to step out of the disease stage and back to a place of alignment and back to a place of being in tune with herself. Now all she simply did was change nutrition, so she changed what she was putting into her body, she changed her environment, so she was working in a very uh, busy environment. She stepped out of that work environment. Um, she changed uh, what she was doing daily, so she wasn't pushing all the time. She started to relax and gave herself more time. And the last thing she did was she sat beside a tree each day and literally sat there with her eyes closed and said, I love you cells, I love you cells, I love you cells. Did that for an hour each day. Within three months, she was able to move beyond what was diagnosed as stage four breast cancer to the point where uh, people were like, couldn't believe it happened. They seen and believed it was a miracle. Just for our viewers, you mentioned nuclear stage. Could you explain what the nuclear part of it means for them? So when it, nuclear is a nuclear energy, yeah? So we've got five different energies in the body, yeah? A nuclear energy, if we wanna make it as simple, is basically space in the body. So nuclear energy is the space that we have in our body. And what happened is she had too much nuclear energy, which created so much space in her body, which was what created the breast cancer. So if you were to give us, uh, if you could have some tips for our viewers, what would your top tip be for them for today? So the top tip for me would be first to understand your body, because no one knows your body like you do. So allow yourself to understand your body and just listen in and connect with your body. Yeah, when you listen in and connect to your body, um, it, it can create massive shifts for yourself, but you can also understand your body and yourself better to then be able to heal medical conditions naturally. 
because no one understands or knows your body like you know your body. How would you explain that tuning into your body and, and reading those signs? For me, the way to do that, I feel, would be just to find a quiet space by yourself, relax, and just simply close your eyes, connect into your body, and just ask your body, what do you need to tell me now? What do you need to share with me now? And just listen into those answers. So is that about, that's a great deal about trusting, isn't it? Trusting that first thing that comes, and the, the, I guess there's, there's a bit of people trusting themselves to have the answer. Would you say that's the... That's where Indeed, that comes yeah, from. It's, all, it's all about yeah, trust in self. Mm. Um, and as part of that is you're, if you sit with your body and ask it the questions, you're always going to get an answer. And what I suggest is just don't judge that answer. Just always have confidence and write that answer down or listen to that answer. Even if it feels really weird and awkward and different, just give it a go because I guarantee your body knows. Thank you, Michael. And for more information on Michael Clark and naturally healing medical conditions, then please go to our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. Welcome back. And now we have Dr. Zara Chelik, an integrative health and wellness expert, and she's talking to us today about gut health. So welcome, Zara. For our viewers, how would they know when somebody's having gut health problems? Yeah, absolutely. So I normally uh, would recommend and encourage people to pay attention to um, the physical symptoms. So the symptoms are actually telling us and gives, giving us feedback about what is happening internally in terms of gut health. So certain symptoms could be, and not uh, exactly, but it could be such as uh, bloating, you know, having diarrhea, constipation, uh, flatulence, um, or also, you know, indigestion, heartburn, uh, things like that can indicate uh, that the gut health is not performing really well. Okay, so what's important for our viewers to know in that, in that instance? You know, it is important that we recognise there are symptoms and our phys physiology is giving us feedback to let us know something isn't right. Uh, so consulting with your healthcare practitioner, maybe uh, getting a stool test done to see the root cause of your symptoms. Uh, it could be maybe a parasite. Again, it could be maybe candidiasis overgrowth in the uh, digestive health. You know, the symptoms are giving feedback to let the individual know something isn't quite right. So I will encourage our viewers to uh, get in touch with their body, connect with the body uh, and recognise the symptoms. Maybe keep a food diary to see what serves them in terms of nutrition and what doesn't. Uh, and to again, you know, consult their healthcare practitioner and get a stool test done um, and take it from there. What would, what would you say happens for people when they've got those symptoms? Well, immune system can be uh, compromised or not functioning you know, at optimum level. Uh, the individual may feel phlegm in the morning, congestion in the nasal cavity, um, maybe puffiness under the eyes. Uh, they may find they are getting frequently getting colds and flus or they have inflammation in the body or the energy levels a little bit low uh, could indicate to the individual that gut health needs some attention as well. Right, and that would include tiredness, I suppose, is that? Well, they, they could be, but then tiredness could lead, you know, come on from other things as well. So I wouldn't particularly say tiredness, but definitely foggy brain could be one of the things. You know, if the person's feeling, you know, foggy brain or a, a bit sluggish with in terms of energy levels, it, you know, the gut health again may play a role. Um, and all, again, it's just more the physical symptoms that food intolerance, uh, that people think, oh yeah, I'm intolerant, I just, you know, cut this food out. I encourage people to really get to know the root cause. Um, that's what's really important. So we are not really depleted and the microbiome is functioning well and we're absorbing our nutrients. Uh, we're not having any deficiencies such as iron deficiency and things like that. In that regards, in that sense, it is important that people find the root cause. Uh, so nothing is actually eating our reserves and depleting us from our nutrients. Would you suggest a particular type of nutrition for people with gut health problems? Yeah, so again, uh, everyone's by individual. Uh, I will encourage everyone to connect with the physical body 
and see what really serves them by individuality because there is not one particular food or nutrition uh, fits and serves everyone's needs. So it is important that we connect with what we're eating and also seeing how that food serves us. Do we get certain symptoms to let us know that it doesn't resonate with our body? And if that's the case, that may not necessarily serve that particular individual. So by individual diet is what I actually encourage people to get onto. What would be the top tip be for people to, to bear in mind about gut health? Yeah, so uh, keeping an eye on your stress levels, keeping an eye, you know, an eye on how you are eating, are you practicing mindful eating, are you swallowing, are you a quick eater? They all sort of play a role when it comes to taking care of our gut health. Not to eat with emotions uh, is definitely a good tip uh, because we can go with our emotions and start eating. Uh, but it, not, it may not necessarily be the right thing at that time. So the body may be telling us something else, you know, for example, somebody could be angry or upset or stress can be a bit heightened and they may sort of, you know, go and uh, suppress that with eating. Um, and in that state, when we're eating in that stressful state, in that heightened state, the nervous system is not balanced. The parasympathetic nervous system is not active. The autonomic nervous system is in balance. So uh, if an individual eats in that stressful state, then really they are eating at sympathetic level, you know, nervous system being overactive in overdrive, uh, which doesn't serve the body, which doesn't really serve the digestive health. So I will encourage people to really, um, you know, pay attention to their state when they're eating as well. Do you have any particular advi advice for our viewers just before we go to break? Absolutely. So connect to see what your body is telling you and it is important that you pay attention and really respect your body to really connect to understand that your body is conveying a message to you and that you do respect your body's needs and you act upon those symptoms. Thank you. And for more information on Dr. Zara and gut health, then please go to her webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. Next time, Dr. Zara will be back talking to us about how to detox your life. And next we have Vicki Jamieson, who's here today to talk to us about her top tips for staying younger. She's a skin nutritionist, so she's an expert in her field. Welcome, Thank Vicky. Thank you. So what would be your top five tips? Well, it's really simple, and it starts off with looking at what really ages our skin prematurely. So the three things that age us prematurely are sun, pollution, and also stress. So my five tips that everyone can do, and they're all really simple. So the first one is, of course, to protect against the sun, which is using an SPF every single day. And one of the key things I get asked a lot is to what, what um, number should I have? So SPF 15 is the best because it has the less chemicals and toxins in it. So it's better for your skin and better for your body. So a 15 and then to reapply is actually a best idea. The second tip is um, cleansing your skin every night. Well, in fact, we all have pollution on our skin. And if you think about how much is around Melbourne, you can see it in the, in the sky. So that will break down. Your skin absorbs at night whatever's on your skin. So we want to wash that away before we go to sleep. The third thing is actually breathing. So I'm talking about abdominal breathing or meditation or that kind of diaphragmic breathing where you're breathing from your tummy. So we're actually expanding the lower part of our diaphragm and that actually does this really amazing thing in our body. It triggers to the nervous system to relax. So it gives the nervous system a really good break from our busy life and always being switched on, which would normally break down our skin. Ah. So when we're on, we release cortisol and when we're just busy, that's what breaks down our skin. So it breaks down connective tissue all over our body, but particularly our collagen. So if we don't do anything about that, we will get saggier skin and you'll see deeper lines. So that's kind of a key 
and it's really easy to do. Now, if you can't sit still, start with two minutes a day and build up to five minutes and then 10 to 15 minutes. 15 minutes is ideal every single day. And then the fourth thing is actually using some skincare. So I go for non-toxic um, skincare that's plant-based, but also very science-based. So what I mean by that is using plant-based ingredients, which are really healthy for our skin and help feed it like food, but can also process to the lower level where our skin's being made. So once it gets down there, that's how we can start our skin keeping nice and healthy and vibrant and young and making the right kind of cells. So things to look for are no parabens, because those are the toxins. Uh, no chemicals, takes 26 seconds for your skin to absorb chemicals into your bloodstream. So we're also having a health effect, which then may come out on our skin. So think of um, pimples, eczema, that type of thing. Could be a good indication that you've got too many chemicals in your products. Um, and then looking for something that will, will work every single day. So keeping it simple. And the last tip, my number five, mm. is nutrition and hydration. So those seem like really obvious, but they directly impact um, our skin. So our skin reflects whatever we are putting in our body just as much as what we're putting on our skin. So obviously a high plant-based diet, but also making sure, and this is particularly important for women over 40, or as our hormones change and we come into perimenopause and menopause, we actually start eating away our our muscle tissue, and that's also our collagen in our, in our face and everywhere in our body. So to stop that sagging, we need to get enough protein. Um, and then we also need to have enough nutrients going into our, um, into our body. So while we say whole foods, you also nowadays need supplementation, but a good supplement. The water is very important because it helps move everything around. So the function of our skin is actually to get rid of toxins and to heat regulate. Um, so the water content actually keeps your skin hydrated, moist, so you get that great glow. That will keep you looking a lot younger. Um, and then it also, obviously, you are feeling better because you can get things moving around in your body. Wonderful. For more information on uh, Vicky and Skin Nutrition, please go to our website. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
either low in gluten or completely gluten free. And that's why it's important to include some raw food in our diets, especially for people who have an issue with gluten content. Um, the other thing to remember is that um, when we're going, going out and looking for foods that are labelled gluten free, do check the labels, turn it around and have a look because um, then it may say may contain traces of gluten and that's really important for people who have celiac disease because um, any trace of gluten can actually be life-threatening. We see a lot of gluten-free products in the shop or that are labelled gluten-free products. Are they all actually good for us? No, actually they're not all good for us because a lot of the gluten-free products like bread, for example, contain a lot of refined sugars. Uh, that's something we're going to be talking about next week. So it's important to make sure that we include raw food in our diet, especially when we've got a gluten intolerance. Oh, that's great. And for some more like top tips for our viewers, what would you say is your absolute top tip for our viewers? I would say that if gluten is an issue for you, make sure that you're including lots of leafy greens and vegetables and fruits and um, seeds and grains that don't include gluten, like uh, oats, barley, rye and wheat. Oh, that's fantastic, thank you. Um, for more information on Tracy and about gluten in your foods, then please go to our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au and we'll say bye-bye for now and see you next week. Thank you.